Back to school. Back to school. Metaversity University of Stakeham. School of Misinformation Studies. Hello, Sandy. Ross, Bob. How do you do? Hotcha. Hotcha. Great to be here. Wasn't Miss Class. Hello, Nico. Hello, Carl. Hello, Amanda. Professor um, Emeritus. Pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure. Stakeham Studies. I will become a st student. It's free, okay. Oh, student dead. Stairs, yes. Step inside the portal. A diploma. I've never gotten a diploma. Okay. Oh. Hello. Stakeham Lecture. Hello. Your first and only course at the University of Stakeham School of Misinformation Studies. This whole school exists because misinformation has become one of the biggest problems we face as a society in the real world. And the fake world. I'm talking about the metaverse. And with elections being one of the prime times for people to spread incorrect information across the internet, there's no better time to learn about it. Even if it's from a frozen beef brand slash professor. That's so, true. In today's lesson, we'll cover everything from misinformation basics to how it exists in the metaverse and what you can do about it. Oh yeah, oh. one more thing. Like any school worth its weight in crypto, there is a test you'll need to pass to graduate and earn your NFT diploma. So pay attention and stick around till the end of the lecture to learn how to do that. I promise it won't take long. What do you say we get into this? Chapter one, what is misinformation? So what exactly is misinformation? Well, misinformation is defined as any misleading or incorrect information, wrong directions, falsely reported news. Really, it's just information that's factually incorrect. But don't confuse it with disinformation, which is easily confused with misinformation. There's one big difference. It's done intentionally. It's any type of false info shared to purpose. Disinformation is intentional. Here's an example to help explain the difference. Let's say a political page posts a malicious attack to social media against a candidate they don't like. In the post, they make up information about the candidate, but play it off as factual with the purpose of tricking voters to not support that candidate. This is disinformation. They knowingly and purposefully shared false info. Now, let's say one of their followers believes the post is true and shares it with their audience. This is misinformation oh. because they're unknowingly sharing false information. Their intent wasn't to deceive their followers, just to share information. Understand? Chapter two. How does it spread? Mm. Misinformation and disinformation is a rapidly growing danger in our society, largely due to how people act on the internet. Just think about it. Never before have humans experienced a time when information, whether true or false, has spread faster than it does today. The fast-paced and engagement-centric nature of social media has led people to attempt virality at the expense of the truth. Media companies capitalize on this by running clickbait headlines meant to spark outrage. And some experts say that their algorithms revolve around the tenet of maximizing engagement meaning comments and shares. This leads to social media users and media companies feeding off each other, creating a downward spiral to information literacy hell. Examples of mis- and disinformation have been abundant for a very long time. Think about how long tabloids have been running fake stories just to get picked up off the newsstand. It goes back to analog media. But these days, it's become increasingly easy to just lie online. The topics people are knowingly or unknowingly spreading false info about are endless. But some of the most common ones are climate change, health and nutrition, celebrity gossip, historical facts, politics, and of course, election influencing news articles. You know, like the one we have in a few days. Chapter three, what does the metaverse have to do with this? With any new technology comes new challenges, but there are some really big ones to address with misinformation's exciting new frontier, the metaverse. The metaverse will usher in a new era of misinformation that will probably be way more complicated and bad than what we have now. New technology like deepfakes, AI, and crypto can all pose problems for us in the future. Plus, the decentralization thing the platforms are built on can make tracing the origin of malicious acts incredibly difficult, if not impossible. We've also seen Web3 misinformation over on Web2. Influencers scamming their fans with crypto and NFT projects are a good example of this. When new technology emerges, there can be gray areas in the law ripe for exploitation. It was the Wild West for a bit, but that's coming to an end. We're even starting to see some influencers get taken down for promoting scams. Chapter 4. 
Um, what do we do about it? According to some scholars, you must navigate the online world by being neither too gullible nor too paranoid. These two extremes may seem like opposites, but both lead to the same place. Conspiratorial thinking. If you trust nothing, your mind will fill in the holes. If you trust everything, you're susceptible to conspiracies you find online. It's important to carry a healthy dose of skepticism with you as you scroll. Here's some good questions to ask yourself when you encounter new information. What is the nature of the information? Opinion? News? Or something else? Is it from a reputable source? And do they cite any sources? Are other reputable sources discussing it? Do you have the ability to fact check any of this information? Sometimes, misinformation is spread by resurfacing something old, like someone with a large following retweeting a dated news article to make it seem like it happened today. Always be sure to check the date of your info. Intuition goes a long way. Experts often speak with certainty and authority. But if something doesn't seem quite right when you read it or hear it, it's best to look more closely at the substance of the message. Which brings us to an important skill, critical thinking. It's a complex topic, this is but here's good. the gist. Critical thinking is the ability to question, analyze, evaluate, and interpret information and come to your own conclusion. Checking sources, questioning intent and motives, looking for inconsistencies and biases, and calling your opinions into question are some helpful techniques for thinking critically. Oh, and one more thing. When you encounter misinformation on the internet, the best thing to do is report it and move along. Because if you comment or engage, you're only amplifying the false info to wider audiences. Furthering its impact and likelihood, someone will believe it to be true. Remember, misinformation can come from anywhere, and it's important to be aware that it exists. And now that you know what it is, you know how to spot it, navigate it, and stop it. That was fire. That was fire. Exam time. What is misinformation? Any misleading or incorrect, uh, okay, facts are that are harmful, you don't like, okay. Any misleading or incorrect information. Here we go. Continue quiz. Okay, okay. What makes th this information different than misinformation? It's done intentionally. It's only spoken. It's meaner. It's only written. It's done intentionally. Boom. Correct. Continue quiz. Which of the following is a common topic of misinformation? Election news for sure. All, health and nutrition. All, all of the above, I'm going to say. Correct. There we go. Which of the following is not a good technique of critical thinking? Asking your uncle. Hmm. Questioning intent and motives. Calling your opinions into question, looking for inconsistency, but I would say asking Uncle, Uncle Dave, sorry, Uncle Dave, what's the best way to pre prevent misinformation from spreading? If you encounter it on social media, report it and move along. That's right. Hey. Means I'm a graduate? Stay from school? Oh my God. Mom's going to be so proud. Thank you, Mom. Oh my gosh. Here we go. I got my diploma. You. Oh, th th this is for Soldier Boy. He says you claim diploma. So okay, I'll take this one. Hey, you must be hungry after all that. Head over to the cafeteria. Okay, I'll get some free steak over the calf. Okay, thank you, class. Thank you, class. I'm gonna head over to the cafeteria. Let me see. Oh, cafeteria is this way. Sorry, I'm, I'm new to the school. Boom. Free steak. I'm hiding around somewhere. So if you can find it, I see, I see some steak. Em. Let's see, where, everybody here in the lunch line, is it behind here in the lunch line, no, okay, line starts here, no, there's some steak I'm somewhere around here, I know, okay, let's check upstairs, <gasps> professor, Okay, free steak at the counter. Okay, this is the counter. Right here. Ah, free steak. Scan, okay, you found it, scan for free. Steak, um, you found it, okay. It says scan for free steak. Um, okay, oh, I don't want to do the, the QR code, but maybe I'll do the QR, I'm gonna check it out. The QR code. I, trust, I trust steak. Um, All right, Steakum now has full control over my cell phone. Okay, they're asking for a bunch of information. And you get one free box of Steakum. Okay, so they're putting some food in your stomach here. I like it. I like it a lot. There's the bookstore. 
the lecture hall. We're gonna go to the bookstore. Browse officially licensed meta metaversary. Uh, oh, nice. Official. Absolutely. Please, please. Okay, wearables claim. There we go. So there are some wearables here. Shout out to Metaversity. This is what's called an experiential learning, exp you know, it's experiential learning. I've been able to come here, learn, and align these values with the, with the, with the brand. Oh, look at all the ways you can use Steakum. Mm, some, some nachos, some noodles, like a burger. In this little breakfast dish. Tiffany Greg, all the, all the fam here hanging out with some Tiffany. Alright, yo. Well, I better get to my next class. Make sure you stop through and, and learn a thing or two, okay? I'll see y'all in period six, okay? Peace out.